So hi everyone and welcome to this video on another example on the consumption uh, leisure framework. Uh, in this example, we'll go through uh, roughly the same procedure, which is, you know, we impose a particular tax rate and then we see how that uh, affects the cons the consumption le uh, labor leisure allocation rather. And uh, the only difference with this and the last example is we're going to be dealing with a slightly more difficult utility function. Uh, so we have here again a simple one period consumption leisure model and uh, the utility function that we are given with is um, uh, LNL, uh, uh, sorry, LNC minus A and sigma over sigma and uh, C here denotes consumption like normal, L denotes the choice of uh, leisure hours rather and uh, we're given with uh, numerical parameter values, A equal to and sigma equal to. A is just some scale, and uh, sigma is an aversion to working, like a risk uh, for working. And uh, we have the same budget constraint as in the last example, that's one minus tau times W times N equal to C. And uh, in here, we also assume that the wage rate is equal to one and the total time is normalized to one, where n plus l is equal to one, okay? So what we need to do here, um, uh, we only have two items here, a, okay? So suppose that the tax rate is uh, 0 0.20, okay? So uh, we need to compute for the optimal choice of labor hours, so that's uh, easy enough. So again, we start with a maximization, max, okay, u, c, l, is equal to ln. Okay, we have two choice variables, c and l. Okay, c minus a and sigma over sigma. But uh, notice l doesn't appear here directly. So how can we let l appear here? Well, we know that uh, n plus l is equal to one. Therefore, uh, n is equal to one minus l. So instead of making this one n, we can make that particular term there. Okay, one minus L, okay. Okay, one minus L raised to sigma, okay? And uh, this is subject to our constraint, which is C is equal to one minus tau times W times N. And similar to before, we let this N be equal to one minus L, right? So that's our constraint. Then uh, we form the Lagrangian. So we form the Lagrangian, Lagrangian. And uh, forming the Lagrangian, okay, we get the uh, L, C, L, lambda, that's equal to Ln, C minus A, 1 minus L, sigma over sigma, okay, plus uh, lambda times 1 minus tau W, 1 minus L, minus C. So that's our Lagrangian. And uh, from here, okay, we derive, we derive, the first order conditions, F, O, and C, okay? So we take the partial of L with respect to C, that should be equal to uh, one over, okay? So C is inside this big LN term, so we're gonna do one over C minus A, one minus L sigma over sigma times one, right? So that's the derivative of the inside with respect to C plus uh, lambda, then derivative of the constraint with respect to C, that's negative one equal to zero, okay? So this implies that lambda is equal to one over C minus A, one minus L, sigma over sigma, okay? Then uh, we derive, the next one we derive is with respect to L. So again, L appears in that big LN term, so we do uh, 1 over C minus A, 1 minus L sigma over sigma times, okay? L appears there, so we have times uh, A, uh, then drop down the sigma, okay? And uh, so it's uh, the scalars A divided by sigma, then derivative of the one, the term containing L by chain rule is sigma times 1 minus L sigma minus 1, right? And then the derivative with respect to L here, well, we can uh, sort of expand the constraint as one minus tau W 
minus uh, 1 minus tau WL minus C. So that's plus lambda times uh, negative 1 minus tau WL, uh, W rather, equal to 0. And uh, if we simplify, well, this cancels out. Okay. So we're going to be left with uh, A. 1 minus L sigma minus 1 over C minus A L min, uh, 1 minus L sigma over sigma equal to lambda 1 minus tau W. Okay. And uh, if we simplify this one, it's just going to be equal to lambda is equal to A 1 minus L sigma minus 1 over C minus A, 1 minus L, sigma over sigma, times 1 over 1 minus tau W, equal, uh, and that's going to be equal to lambda, right? So that's what we have. Our third FOC is just this one, the constraint. So that's just uh, 1 minus tau W times 1 minus L minus C is 0. Okay. So we number it 1, 2, 3. Okay. Then now uh, we equate, they equate uh, 1 and 2. So we get uh, equated to lambda. So you get that uh, 1 over C minus A, uh, sorry, C, A times 1 minus L over sigma, sigma is equal to A1 minus L, sigma minus one, over C minus A, L minus one minus L, sigma over sigma, one over one minus tau W. So clearly we can cancel these two terms out by dividing both, by multiplying both sides by that. And uh, we're going to be left with a uh, one minus tau w is equal to a times one minus l sigma minus one, right? Then, okay, we know, okay, we know that uh, a is equal to two and uh, sigma is equal to two and uh, w is equal to one, okay? So we get one minus tau times one is equal to two times one minus L, two minus one. So that's just one minus tau equal to two times one minus L. So we simplify further, that's two times uh, minus two L equal to one minus tau, right? And uh, from here we get that two L is equal to two minus, uh, uh, two minus uh, one minus tau, right? And uh, from here, okay, we divide both sides by two, two, and uh, we get L is equal to one minus a uh, one minus tau divided by two, right? So that would be L star. Now, the reason why I didn't plug in the tax rate is because the next item also involves the tax rate. So um, if, okay, in letter A, if the tax rate is 0.2, what is L? Well, L star is equal to one minus, okay, um, uh, one minus 0 0.20 divided by two, right? So that's gonna be one minus 0 0.8 divided by two, right? And that's gonna be 0 0.6, right? So if the tax rate is 0 0.2, so L star is 0 0.6, okay? Then uh, you can also find C star by plugging in here. So, so uh, C star would be equal to one minus 0 0.8 times, uh, you have here W, which is one, okay, times one minus L, so one minus 0 0.6. So you get a 0.2, okay, times one times 0.4, okay? And uh, that will be the solution if you do it. Okay, so that's gonna be C star. And uh, B, letter B, okay, is just asking, okay, what if the tax rate is now 30%? Okay, so, well, that's simple enough. So if tau is equal to 0 0.30, well, we just, instead of using 0 0.2, we use 0 0.3. That's L star is equal to one minus, one minus 0.3 
0 divided by 2. So we get 1 minus 0.7 divided by 2. So this will be 0 0.65, right? And that means that L star is 0 0.65. So that's a higher proportion for leisure hours okay, in this particular case. Um, and that's mainly due to the form of the utility function. And the C star would now be equal to um, 1 minus 0 0.3. Uh, uh, sorry, this is, uh, this is my apologies. This is supposed to be 0 0.2. So this is 0 0.8, okay? Then 1 minus 0 0.3 times 1 times 1 minus 0 0.65. So this one will be equal to 0 0.7 times 0 0.35. Okay. And that will be the C star there. So uh, that's our second example on the consumption leisure framework. Uh, and uh, in the next video, we're going to move on to the consumption savings model. So thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.